who is Jennifer Flowers? You know her. Oh, yes. How do you know her? How would you describe your relationship? A very limited, uh, but until this, you know, friendly, but limited. I, had, I met her uh, in the late 70s when I was Attorney General. Uh, and she was one of a number of young people who were working for the television stations around Little Rock. And, uh, the people in politics and the people in the media knew each other then, just as they do now. Uh, she left our state, uh, and for years I didn't really hear from her, know what she was doing. Uh, then she came back, uh, I don't know, sometime a few years ago, and uh, went to work again in the state. Uh, so that's how, that's who she is. Was she a friend, an acquaintance? Did your wife know her? Oh, oh yes. Oh, sure. She was an acquaintance, I would mm -hmm. say, a friendly acquaintance. She's a legend and is described in some detail in a supermarket tabloid, which she calls a 12-year affair with you. It, that allegation is false. When this woman first got caught up in these charges, I felt, as I felt about all of these women, that, you know, they've just been minding their own business and they got hit by a meteor. I mean, it was no fault of their own. Uh, we reached out to them. I met with two of them to reassure them. They were friends of ours. I felt terrible about what was happening to them. You know, Bill talked to this woman every time she called distraught saying her life was going to be ruined and, you know, he'd get off the phone and tell me that she said sort of wacky things which we thought were attributable to the fact that she was terrified. It was only when money came out, when the tabloid went down there offering people money to say that uh, they had been involved with me, that she changed her story. There's a recession on, times are tough and, and I think you can expect more and more of these stories as long as they're down there handing out money. I'm assuming from your answer that you're categorically denying that you ever had an affair with Jennifer Flowers. I've said that before, uh, and so has she. You said that your marriage has had problems, that you've had difficulties. What do you mean by that? What does that mean? Is that some kind of, uh, help us break the code. I mean, does that mean you were separated? Does that mean that you had communication problems? Does that mean you contemplated divorce? Does it mean adultery? I think the American people, at least people that have been married for a long time, know what it means and know the whole range of things that it can mean. You've been saying all week that you've got to put this issue behind you. Uh, are you prepared tonight to say that you've never had an extramarital affair? I'm not prepared tonight to say that any married couple should ever discuss that with anyone but themselves. I'm not prepared to say that about anybody. Um, I think... Th Governor, that's what you... Ex excuse me. That's what you've been saying, essentially, for the last but that's couple of months. Look, Steve, you go back and listen to what I said. You know, I have acknowledged wrongdoing. I have acknowledged causing pain in my marriage. I have said things to you tonight and to the American people from the beginning that no American politician ever has. I think most Americans who are watching this tonight, they'll know what we're saying, they'll get it, and they'll feel that we have been more candid. And I think what the, the press has to decide is, are we going to engage in a game of gotcha? You know, I can remember a time and it was sad when, when a divorced person couldn't run for president. And that time, thank goodness, has passed. Nobody's prejudiced against anybody because they're divorced. Are we going to take the reverse position now that if people have problems in their marriage and there are things in their past which they don't want to discuss, which are painful to them, that they can't run? I, I think most Americans would agree that it's very admirable that you had, have stayed together, that you've worked your problems out, that you seem to have reached some sort of an understanding and, and an arrangement. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, but <laughs> wait a minute. You're, you're looking at two people who love each other. This is not an arrangement or an understanding. This is a marriage. That's a very different thing. You know, I'm not sitting here as some little woman standing by my man like Tammy Wynette. I'm sitting here because I love him and I respect him and I honor what he's been through and what we've been through together. And you know, if that's not enough for people, then heck, don't vote for him. A good friend of yours, one of your campaign advisors, told us the other day, Bill Clinton has got to level with the American people tonight. Otherwise, his candidacy is dead. You feel like you've leveled with the American I people? I have absolutely leveled with the American people. 
We're going to do the best we can to level with people, and then we're going to let them make up their minds. Because I think if the American people get a chance, and if they're trusted to exercise their vote right, because people talk to them about real issues, this country will be okay. That's what we're betting on, and we're just going to roll the dice and see what happens. You call it a gamble. Uh, you came here tonight to try and put it behind you. You're going to get on the plane when you walk out of this room and go back to New Hampshire. You think you've succeeded? That's up to the American people, and to some extent up to the press. This will test the character of the press. It is not only my character that has been tested. 